let's say if we want to find the derivative of this function. 7x plus 4 divided by x squared plus 5. How can we do so? How can we find the derivative of a function in a fraction? So we need to use something called the quotient rule. And here's the formula that you need to be familiar with. The derivative of f divided by g is equal to g times f prime minus f times g prime divided by g squared. So f is the numerator of the fraction and g is the denominator. So we could say that f is equal to 7x plus 4 and g is equal to x squared plus 5. So what's f prime and what's g prime? f prime, the derivative of f, that's going to be the derivative of 7x plus 4. The derivative of 7x is just 7, and the derivative of any constant is 0. Now for g prime, the derivative of x squared plus 5 is 2x. So using this formula, this is going to be equal to g, where g is x squared plus 5, multiplied by f prime, and so that's 7, and then minus f, which is 7x plus 4, times g prime, which is 2x, divided by g squared. And g squared is x squared plus 5, but squared. So now let's get rid of this. Now, some teachers will allow you to leave your answer like this, because this represents the derivative of this expression. Other teachers will want you to go further and simplify it. So we're going to do that in this example. Let's distribute the 7. So x squared times 7 is 7x squared. And then we have 7 times 5, which is 35. Now, 2x times negative 7x, that's negative 14x squared. And then we have 2x times 4 with the negative sign in front. So that's negative 8x divided by this. So now let's combine like terms. 7x squared minus 14x squared, that's negative 7 x squared. And then we have negative 8x plus 35 divided by x squared plus 5 squared. And so this is the answer to the problem. So that's how you can use the quotient rule to find the derivative of common expressions in the form of a fraction. Let's try a similar example. Go ahead and find the derivative of x squared divided by x minus 5. So feel free to take a minute, pause the video, and give this problem a shot. So let's identify f and g. So f is going to be the numerator of the fraction, which is x squared, and g is going to be the denominator, x minus 5. So f prime, the derivative of x squared, that's going to be 2x, and then g prime, the derivative of x, which is 1, and the derivative of negative 5 is 0, so g prime is 1. Now I'm going to rewrite the formula. So the derivative of f over g is going to be g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. Now let's go ahead and apply it. So g in this example is x minus 5. f prime that's 2x, and then minus, f is still x squared, and then g prime, that's 1, divided by g squared, or x minus 5 squared. So now let's simplify. Let's distribute 2x to x minus 5. So x times 2x is 2x squared negative 5 times 2x 
is negative 10x. And then we have negative x squared. Two x squared minus x squared is one x squared. So the final answer is x squared minus 10 x divided by x minus five squared. You could leave your answer like this if you want to, or you could also take out the GCF in the numerator, which is x. So you could write your answer like this, x times x minus 10 divided by x minus five squared, if you want to factor it completely. So both answers are acceptable. Let's try another example. So let's say if we have sine x divided by x. Use the quotient rule to find the derivative of that expression. So let's write the formula first. So we know it's going to be g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. This helps you to prevent making mistakes. Now, let's define what f and g are. f is going to be sine x, and g is x. f prime, what is the derivative of sine x? The derivative of sine is cosine. As for g prime, the derivative of x is 1. So now let's use the formula. So it's going to be g, which is x, times f prime, so that's cosine x, minus f, which is sine x, and g prime is 1, divided by g squared, or x squared. Now for this problem, that's basically it. There's not much we can do in terms of simplification. So the final answer is simply x cosine x minus sine x, all divided by x squared. And so that's it for this problem. The derivative of tangent x is equal to secant squared. Go ahead and use the quotient rule to prove that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now tangent is sine divided by cosine. So we have a fraction. So f in this example is sine x. g is cosine. Now f prime, the derivative of sine, that's cosine. And what's the derivative of cosine x? The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So using the formula, the derivative of f over g, as always, is going to be g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. So g is cosine x. f prime is also cosine x minus f, which is sine x, times g prime, and that's negative sine x. Now, g squared, that's going to be cosine squared. Now, let's see what we can do to simplify this expression. Cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x. Negative sine x times another negative sine x, that's going to be positive sine squared. And this is all divided by cosine squared, which we can write like that if we want to. Now, what is cosine squared plus sine squared? That's another trigonometric identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. And 1 over cosine is secant. So 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared. And that's how you can show that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. You can do so by using the quotient rule. But you got to convert it from tangent to sine over cosine. The derivative of secant x is secant tangent x. Go ahead and use the quotient rule to prove this statement. Now secant is 1 over cosine. 
So how can we show that the derivative of one of a cosine is secant tangent? Well, let's define f and g. So f is going to be the numerator, f is 1. g is going to be cosine x. f prime, the derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So using a formula, it's going to be g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. So g is cosine x, and then f prime is 0, minus f, which is 1, times g prime, that's negative sine x. All divided by g squared, or cosine x squared. Cosine times 0 is 0. So that's going to disappear. And we're going to have negative 1 times negative sine x, which is positive sine x, all divided by cosine squared. Now I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over cosine x times sine over cosine. So these expressions are the same because 1 times sine is still sine and cosine times cosine is still cosine squared. Now the reason why I separated this way is because 1 over cosine will give me secant x, and sine over cosine is tangent x. So that's how you can show that the derivative of secant is secant tangent using the quotient rule.